Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Moms in Real Estate. We have an awesome guest today, Shannon Gillette. She is a lover of Jesus, a wife, a mom of three boys, and she's a um, great production, 40 under 40, top 1% of realtors. What a treat today to hear from her. So uh, let's get everything started. Angela Fazio is an industry powerhouse who has overseen 40,000 homes sold and $9 billion in production. And Kristen Cantrell is one of the nation's most accomplished team leaders, helping thousands of agents build their businesses. They are passionate about educating, encouraging, and empowering moms in real estate. Our next episode starts now. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Kristen. Hi. And welcome, Shannon. Thank you so much for being a guest today with us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be back. I think I was on your podcast, what, like three years ago or, or something? Yeah, years ago. It was a while ago. That's that's for sure. So give us a little update. What's going on in your life? Tell us a little, tell your audience a little bit about who you are. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I mean, it's been a crazy past two years. Uh, last year in 2019, I personally sold over 70 homes, over $30 million, and those are my transactions, not a team writing deals under my name. So uh, my business basically doubled in a year, and I really have Instagram and video to thank for that. So we can definitely get into that later, but if somebody's watching and they're like, who's Shannon? I have no idea who she is. Um, I actually grew up in Chandler, Arizona, barely graduated from high school, was raised by a single mom, and graduated high school and somebody told me about leasing apartments would be a great job so fresh out of high school i got a job leasing apartments for a luxury uh, property management company in town and i did that for four years and they really offered this great training i did really well i i got that love for helping people find their home and then i started to tell friends that hey i mean it would be my dream to sell new homes and they would laugh at me and say and this was back in 2005, you know, in the crazy market days where people were lining up and camping to get a home. And people would laugh and they're like, Shannon, you have to have a college degree to get that job. They're, they're not going to hire you. Um, so I didn't give up. I kept applying for a year for new home sales jobs. Finally, one uh, sales manager brought me in for a group interview and offered me the job. So I started selling new homes in 2006. I was all, this was my dream job. I was so excited. I I had positive thoughts. I was ready to sell homes. And then the market started to change. And I noticed a lot of my coworkers, they just got out of this crazy market where you didn't even have to have any sales skills. You just basically took orders. Uh, they, they were just kind of walking around really negative, complaining, um, not working hard, not doing anything. But I just came in fresh. This was my dream job. Worked really hard. So I was 23 years old in the you know middle of the recession i was the number one new home sales consultant in the entire country for the country's largest builder so for eight years i sold new homes did really well at that but i'm also a mom i have three boys and in the new home sales world you basically are live in your off your sales office you have no flexibility um, my oldest son when he took his first steps i got it on a video as i was sitting in my model home sales office so I was just missing out on so much, but I was scared to go into resale because I was basically just brand new, even though I had sold and closed hundreds of homes. But I took the leap in 2014, left new home sales to go into resale. It took probably a year for even my own family to consider me as a realtor. Um, I was basically brand new. I had to start from scratch. I didn't have money to buy leads or any of that. So I really focus on my social media, building my brand, and implementing a really unique video marketing campaign that um, to this point in my business, I don't cold call, I don't door knock, I don't buy leads. All of my 70 sales last year, those were people that reached out to me and said, hey, are you taking on new listings right now? I see all your videos. Will you be my realtor? And that's awesome because people are just reaching out to me. That's yeah, so cool. that is really awesome. I feel like there's a lot of um, a lot of people that are in the new home um, sales arena and they want to transition into resale. So, what advice would you give them? Because um, I feel like exactly like you said, like you were scared. How do I make that leap? And yeah. I think that any encouragement that you could give them or anything that they could be doing now to prepare would be awesome. 
Yes, especially moms. You don't find a lot of moms with young kids in new home sales because mm -hmm. it's very hard. I mean, you're working weekends, holidays, getting home every single night late, you know, 7, 8 p.m. It's a really hard lifestyle. Um, but I was miserable. I felt like I was in a jail. I was, I'm, I love to stay busy and I would catch up on all my work and I'd be sitting looking at the flags and you know, all the new home sales have the flags blowing in the wind. I'd be sitting there like watching the flag blow in the wind. And I'm like, this is horrible. Like I can't do this anymore. Meanwhile, my kids, I never see them. My husband, and I have different days off. It's horrible, but I was too scared. And Ultimately, looking back, my faith is very important to me. We're really involved in our church. And I just think I was relying too much on myself and not that God would provide and take care of me and my family if I made this leap. So it was scary. And I basically told myself because I'd be driving. Sometimes I would get to go to church on Sunday morning and I would leave my family at church and drive to the sales office crying because I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've got to go spend nine hours in this office again today. But I was like, I told myself, I can always go back to new home sales if this resale thing doesn't work out um, because I did really well in new home sales. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to give myself six months. I have to do this. So I don't know if that answers your question. but It does. It does because uh, I think you're right. I think too often um, people who are in a, any situation where they're afraid to make a change, they rely on themselves. And that's why they're so scared because when all you do is rely on yourself, well, that kind of, I don't know about you and I'm a pretty strong woman, but I don't want to just rely on myself. Yeah. When I rely on the God of the universe, you know, yeah, exactly. on him. So that's excellent advice to shift your mind to do it afraid, knowing that there's a God out there that loves us and will mm -hmm. take care of us. That doesn't like, mean immediate success it's not a magic pill yeah no you but, definitely yeah you have to have you know that strong work ethic and a foundation and know what your why is because a lot of people might be listening to this and maybe they're not in new home sales but they're in a corporate job and they're miserable they're not happy they don't love their job but they have that guaranteed income and it's very scary to leave that that um you know that job but I think if you have the passion, you have to really understand what we're doing, that we're helping people with their home, where they'll raise their family. It's a really important decision for somebody and not thinking about your commission check or anything like that. If you're just serving your client, you know, if you're willing to go take somebody out that's looking for a rental home and not expect, you know, not say, no, I'm not going to help you find your rental home because I don't, I only make $25 on that, like helping people. Uh, being disciplined. I mean, I really feel like you have to know what your why is because this job is not easy. And I laugh anytime somebody tells me, I actually just want to like, I don't even know what I want to do. And they're like, oh, your job must be so fun. You just look at homes all day. Oh, yes. <laughs> <You're on now. laughs> yeah. So actually, no, imagine never being able to leave your phone again for the rest of your life. <laughs> and um, just, you know, it's, we're pulled in so many different directions. So knowing you know, your why, obviously my why is my family. I have three boys. Um, my husband does a lot of ministry. He runs a nonprofit. So my real estate business has become so successful that we don't even have to rely on any of his income. So we can pour all of that back out into the community. In the month of December, we fed over 6,000 people experiencing homelessness. So um, we're really into giving back, serving our community. And really, I consider my job more of a ministry of helping people during a really stressful time you know, buy and sell real estate. Same. I totally agree. Now, Angela says that all the time. I'm so passionate about that. Like mm -hmm. this, my husband, my whole career has been based on ministry because we, I don't know your whole story, but I wasn't mm -hmm. saved until I was almost 30. And that's mm -hmm. when I was starting real estate. So mm -hmm. when the lights went on and I was like, oh my gosh, all of life is all for Jesus. <laughs> I was yeah. like, everything started to make sense. And our whole career has been to serve people. And from my perspective now, it's not just clients, it's other realtors who need a mental boost, who need the right perspective, who need to understand what's entailed of hard work and right mindset and what it means to have strong work ethic and how to serve clients. It's, it's, it's so, pa I'm so passionate about it. Yeah. I couldn't imagine like not having God in my life, like in this job, I would literally go <laughs> crazy because it's not easy. And you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that if you are in it for the right reasons, helping your clients, 
serving the community, giving back. I mean, we're, we tied to our church, like all of that, like God will provide. And it's so cool to see God provide because like I said earlier, I literally have people call me and say, will you be my realtor? I see your stuff on Instagram. Like, how cool is that? Like, I don't have to spend my time knocking on doors or cold calling or buying Zillow leads. I've never really bought a lead and I've just built this brand. And we have just a small team, but we require anybody on our team has to actively be involved in the community, serving their time, you know, whether in their church or through nonprofits, because it's so important to be, you know, take that break from real estate and, and serve others. Can you like take a couple minutes? I know like you had, you've mentioned this before, but you know, <clears throat> for two years, your business to explode like that. And you really like, you talk about how much Instagram's imp impacted that. Um, run us through what does that mean? Because I think a lot of people, I think most realtors that I meet with struggle with Instagram. You do a great job at it. Um, but wh why do you think people reach out to you and look to, like they don't even know you and they are calling mm -hmm. you? Will you do this for me? Like, why do they do that? Yeah, so that's a really good question because right now we live in this world where we have virtual friends. Like, you may have never met somebody in person, but you know their dog's name. Like, you know, they have a lizard or where they went to vacation and you We're develop both these lizard moms. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have a lizard too. I have a bearded yeah. dragon. Well, but Angela does or? No. No. Oh, I, have my oh. lizard. <laughs> oh. I have enough kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we live in this virtual world. So it's so cool with social media because the average person is spending about three hours on social media every day. The millennial is the lar largest pool of buyers right now. Mm -hmm. So that younger generation that's grew up with social media, they're investing time in there. So if you do your Instagram and your social media right, you can grow your business like crazy. And first, I think before I have a lot of like really cool tips of, of how I use Instagram to sell homes. But first, I think it's really important to have just the basic things down in your life, like because if you don't have this, real estate will take over 24 hours a day. You will get burnt out. You won't have that positive attitude when clients are calling you to see if you could show them 10 homes this afternoon and maybe you wanted to spend time with your family or something like that. But at the beginning of every month, because people always ask me, I get so many DMs on Instagram and I respond to every single one of them. But a lot of moms will ask me, man, how do you do it? Like, how are you personally selling 70 homes per year, actively involved in your church, raising three boys, I have a husband, like all of these things. But at the beginning of every month, I'm a firm believer in taking your calendar and writing down your non-negotiables and treating that non-negotiable as if you had a $5 million listing appointment. You're not gonna change that appointment. So for example, my husband and I are non-negotiable date nights, family time. I have to write in a family dinner because right now the market's crazy. I have to be on call, I have to be ready to go. And we don't eat dinner together every night as a family, but we try to make that really special time of having that non-negotiable down and then having something for yourself, like so you can recharge, you know, whether it's getting together with friends or just things that are important to you. Maybe you like to volunteer at an animal shelter or something like that. And just having those non-real estate things down and also continuing to sharpen your skills. I don't really watch any TV. I like to use my time really wisely. And if I'm driving to a showing, I will listen to a podcast or an audiobook and just always be learning, always be sharpening your skills. Because I think in this job, a lot of realtors, they get really comfortable and they don't want to implement video. They don't want to implement Instagram, but things are always changing. And I want to be doing things today that other realtors don't start doing for another five years. I want to be ahead of all the trends in that. And also getting up early is very important. And today I was up at 4 a.m., and I can't sleep in. There's not enough time in the day to get everything done, you know, and scheduling your workouts and your health and all of that. So being very strategic on your schedule. And now to answer your Instagram question, now you can take those things. Like maybe you're at a date night with your husband or you're taking yesterday. I had to go get a lockbox and I brought my oldest son with me and we went to Starbucks and we had a little coffee date. Killed two birds with one stone kind of thing. Now you can put that on your Instagram story because the biggest mistake most realtors are making is they treat their Instagram like a commercial and it's 100% just sold, just listed, just closed. Here's my house. Here's my house. I'm a realtor. Do you want to buy a home? Nobody wants to follow that. Would you want to follow somebody selling something? Say you were following like 
a car salesman and all they posted was about their cars for sale, that wouldn't be very interesting because people are tuning into Instagram similar to watching a TV show. They're looking to be entertained, inspired, watching those Instagram stories and they want to learn more about you. So I think a lot of success from my Instagram um, has come from when uh, about a year and a half ago, I used to have two Instagram pages. I had my business and I had my personal. My personal was private just for like my family and friends. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to delete that business page. I'm going to make my private, my private page public and I'm going to let all of these strangers in on my life. So anybody that follows me knows I have three kids, I have a lizard, I have two dogs. You know, we like to go on vacation, things like that. And then I sprinkle in real estate. So I'm always reminding them that I do sell real estate, but it's not in their face. So that's really powerful to use Instagram in that way. Yeah, that's wise. That's wise. You're right. You know, people don't go to Instagram to be sold. They go there because they enjoy scrolling and learning mm -hmm. about other people <laughs> and finding people who have interests similar to theirs. And, and so I think you're right on the money. That's awesome. Yeah, it's worked out really well. And I mean, that's crazy to think like how much you've exploded from that. Like, it's it's really cool. I was actually telling Angela, I said, "Do you remember when Shannon was on like three years ago?" And she's like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Do you remember when? Because you were on our game show." Oh, and this yeah. this is three years ago, and you were so shy. I was like, I feel like there's like she's completely like a little bit different now because you were you didn't want to go on that game show at first. Do you remember that? Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, I've always been a little insecure. Like, well, people don't really know who I am. Even when I went on the podcast three years ago, that was the first podcast that I was ever invited to be on. I was like, dude, are you sure they want me? Like, I, I think I sold like $10 million or something. And now I have like national podcasts reaching out like, well, yours is national too, but like really big podcasts reaching out. And it's, it's crazy because in 2018, I sold about 15 million. And then in 2019, 30 million and a direct result of branding through social media and my use of video. And I, my listings are, are a whole nother thing. I do a home of the day video, things like that, but it's been crazy and awesome to not have to cold call or buy yeah. things. What a blessing. What a blessing. So so what? That, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. You go. <laughs> I want to, I guess like, um, I want to go back real quick to if you, if somebody is, um, let's say, you know, I'm doing decent business, but I'm cold calling, let's just use that. And I hate work. Like I don't want to cold call, but it's my means of getting business. Like what advice would you have for an agent that's doing what they don't like to get out of that rut and to grow as a real estate agent? Well, I think every realtor needs to embrace video. I think video needs to be a non-negotiable. Um, which I can also give a few tips on video and branding and having your face on video and all that to gain trust. Um, but I think every agent needs to embrace at least one social media platform and invest time in it every day. So there's not a lot of real estate agents doing Instagram well. Uh, like I said, most agents, and I follow a lot of them, they are making this nonstop selling and they're posting a picture of a house on their feed and writing sold on it. Like you'll never see any of my feed have text on my pictures because one, Instagram flags that as an ad and two, people feel like they're being sold and they don't want to. They want to build relationship. They want to know, like, and trust you. And then think of you as the realtor. They want to know about your life. And um, so I would say my first suggestion, you know, if somebody wanted to start growing their business through Instagram is get your Instagram page, don't have two pages. Nobody can manage a business page. What are you going to put on your business page? Like all business stuff. Just delete that. I know it's hard when you're a mom and you have kids and you're letting strangers. I have over 11,000 followers. I'm sure I have some creepy people following me and seeing my kids and all that. Obviously, I'm not going to like broadcast where they go to school or anything like that. But, um, you know, making your, your page public and treating it more of like, you know, where people can get to know you. And following other realtors that do Instagram well for inspiration, a few realtors that I suggest following will first be, you can follow me at, and it's at Shannon underscore Gillette. I love following Steve Panate, who's in Texas, and Sharon White, who's on my team. I feel like they do such a good job where you feel like you know their kids, you know their kids' names, you know when their birthday is, like you just, you, you just kind of like develop this relationship where 
you don't even, you may have never even met them in person, but you feel like you're friends. And um, so one is following people that are doing it well and maybe don't copy them, but look at what they're doing. You know, it's really important to get your face out there on Instagram and it can feel very weird, like taking your cell phone and talking into it about, oh, you know, I'm about to go show a home or blah, blah, blah. But as you're talking to people, you're developing these relationships and you can post on your Instagram story a video of you talking into the camera and you've just shared all of that with your followers. And I think a lot of people get hung up on the fact that they don't have a lot of followers. And the reality is if you only have 20 followers, that's still 20 people. If you had those 20 people over for dinner tonight, they wouldn't even fit around your dining room table. So don't get consumed with nobody's watching my stories. Just starting small, staying consistent, it will definitely pay off. And um, watching podcast, like listening to podcasts, watching YouTube videos with tips and things and how to boost engagement and all of that, it, it can just really be huge for your business. Uh, yeah, and and someone, sorry, Angela, I keep doing that. Okay, um, if okay. someone is watching and they are like wanting to up their Instagram game too, um, you guys are probably familiar with Stephanie Mainville. She's been on here and she's awesome on Instagram and she's doing her Instagram class on July 7th, I think. Send me a message and I'll get you the information. But she really helps with everything Shannon's saying. And um, and I've been to the class twice. It definitely like helps you with like a roadmap and a plan and um, just different things that she uses, different applications to make it easier too. So yeah. yeah, that's good advice. I think that one of the things that I'm I'm taking from your attitude in general, Shannon, is um, and I'm a proponent of this for sure, just as a person, but it, in particular in real estate, I think it's easy to fall into a rut where you think you've got it all figured out and you just keep doing the same things. Mm -hmm. And I think that what I've heard from you is, is taking time on a consistent basis to push yourself mm -hmm. in whatever direction that is. Yeah. Learn something new, change mm -hmm. something for the positive, get ahead of the learning curve, because mm -hmm. then that becomes habitual. And then you become a professional who's not afraid of change and not afraid to grow and not afraid to learn something new. And if you mm -hmm. can embrace those two things, that has success written all over it. Because mm -hmm. if you're stagnant, you're moving backwards. Yeah, and more than ever, our clients are hiring us because of our, our brand and our personality and us as a person versus you know what what we sell. There's what, 55,000 licensed realtors in the state of Arizona. You know, you have to set yourself apart. You have to be ahead of the trends and sharpening your skills. And uh, another big part in, in addition to Instagram of how I really believe that, you know, I've gotten to the point of selling 70 homes a year is my use of, of video. I um, have studied video. I would never list a home and not do a professional video, whether I list a $90,000 lot in Santan Valley or a $2.6 million home in Chandler. Every single one of my listings will have a 60 second home of the day video commercial. And the average human attention span is down to eight seconds. So I, I think if another, you know, if somebody wants to do, do two things today, you know, implement, build their Instagram, make it more personal, not all of a commercial, and then implementing video because if you're not doing video, I mean, you're really missing out. So I do these video commercials and um, I'm on every one of my videos. So you'll see it's branded. I say, welcome to the home of the day. I'm Shannon Gillette with the Gillette Revolve on real estate. And then I do a script of the video and I will literally, I live here in Queen Creek. I will literally be out to dinner with my family and people come up to me and they're like, are you Shannon Gillette? You know, I follow you on Instagram. I see your videos everywhere um, because we take those 60 second videos and we're target targeting them out through pay-per-click ads and social media ads to the right buyers and even to other realtors. So we're able to get our home of the day video in front of 10,000 people within the first seven days on market. And we have so many stories of how our listings have sold from a direct result from the video marketing because the reality is not every single buyer is actively looking for a home every day on MLS. And right. here in Queen Creek, we our videos might reach somebody that maybe didn't know about Queen Creek. They're only looking in Gilbert and Chandler, and it's so powerful. So um, really thinking about implementing video and not being scared. A lot of people will say, oh, my gosh, I'm horrible on camera. I'm not natural. I don't want to 
I'm too nervous. But I heard another agent say, Seth O'Byrne, who's in San Diego, I also recommend following him. He does Instagram really well. He goes, think about your first listing appointment you ever went on. You were probably nervous. I'm still nervous when I go to listing appointments. <laughs> like you were nervous, right? But then you went to like another listing appointment and five more and 10 more. And you got the experience and now you're not as nervous. And it's the same with video. Getting in front of the camera because you have to gain trust. People need to know your face. You need to build your brand. You can't just throw a video up of a drone of the outside of the house. I've seen videos that are a one minute drone video of the outside of the house. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not <laughs> People are bored. They're clicking off. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, thank you so much. You have so much wise advice. Clearly, you um, served your clients well which is so important. And um, it's been such a pleasure to talk with you today. And I'm sure our audience is going to be chomping at the bit to contact you or get some tips from you. So um, is there anywhere people can go other than just following you? Maybe that's the answer just to kind of get a feel for some of the things that you've talked about um, playing out in your career. Is that the best thing for them to do is just follow you on Instagram? Yeah, so I respond to every single direct message on Instagram and I get a lot of them. So if anybody has questions on anything or even how I can balance like being a mom and a full time realtor and all of that, like, I'm happy to answer questions. If somebody wanted to send me a DM on Instagram, that's the, probably the best way to get a hold of me. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for today. I know Kristen and I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I'll leave have a professional on. So everyone, tune in every week. Um, share this with other people so they can learn from Shannon. And God bless all of you. Thank you. Bye, ladies. Bye.